Boom, what up YouTube and Pythonistas? Welcome to another Python web scraping tutorial number 20 in the series. I've been away for some time, but I'm, now I'm back. I'm making you guys more videos. And today we are going to talk about how to combine uh, an API and web scraping together, how we can utilize the both, both sites. So this is going to be a very, very exciting video hopefully and I was just uh, want to take a minute to thank you guys for watching these videos and if you haven't already please subscribe hit the like button if you like the content share the video or comment and also you can get access to the source code for all of the video tutorials that I've made so far so you can have it on in the this link or you can find the link in the description I'll show you guys when you click the link you will land at something like this uh, you will get uh, a page where you land and you can subscribe to to uh, to this membership uh, site for $25 a month and for that those $25 a month you will get a huge library of all the source code of this video tutorials and I'll be adding uh, lots of lots of more code, uh, ebooks, cheat sheets, uh, etc., in, in this library. So, uh, this way you can support me so I can make these videos, uh, continue make these videos, and bring you guys uh, valuable content. So, please do. I, for $25 a month, you will get tons of tons of content, uh, which is useful according to your comments and the feedbacks you guys have given me so thank you so much for giving me feedback okay now let's get into the, uh, the main meat of the tutorial so apis and web scraping together uh, although the reason of existence of many modern web applications is to take existing data and format it in a more appealing way uh, we could argue that this isn't a very interesting thing to do in most instances so if you're using an API uh, as your only data source, the best you can do is merely copy someone else's database that already exists and which is essentially already published. Uh, what can be far more interesting is to take two or more data sources and combine them in a novel way or use an API as a tool to look at scrape data from a new perspective. So let's... Uh, set a mission for this um, tutorial uh, let's look at one example of how data from apis can be used in conjunction with web scraping and this is uh, we can use it to see which part of the world contributes the most to wikipedia so if you have spent uh, much time on wikipedia you will likely come across an article's re revision history we'll look at it here for example, Python program language has a revision history, uh, which displays a list of recent edits. Uh, if users are logged into Wikipedia, when they make the edit, their username is displayed. If they are not logged in, their IP address is recorded, as shown here. So, so let's just say that I've tried this. As you can see, let's say that we want to check this IP address and use a free um, geo IP as we have used from earlier. And we can see that uh, as of making this tutorial, uh, this is from your United States, Pennsylvania, and the city is Bourbon. And IP addresses can occasionally shift geographically. geographically. So this information isn't all that interesting on its own, uh, but what if we could gather many, many points of geographic data about Wikipedia edits and where they occur? That's what we are going to try now. So let's go into creating a basic script that crawls Wikipedia, looks for revision history pages, and then looks for IP addresses on those revision history pages which isn't actually difficult. We're going to use a modified code from earlier tutorials. So I highly recommend you to check out the earlier tutorials. 
so this is the script uh, that just that does just that uh, it looks for IP addresses on those revision history pages so and this code is available will be available I'll, I'll upload it in, in, the, in the membership uh, area so you can download it so this program uses two main functions which is first is the get links we have used it in an earlier tutorial and the new get history IP IPs which searches for the contents of all links with the class MV a non user link indicating indicating an anonymous user with an IP address rather than a username and returns it as a set so let's talk a little bit about sets so up until this point uh, in this tutorial I, we have relied mo almost exclusively on two Python data structures to store multiple pieces of data lists and dictionaries with both of these options why would we use a set well python sets are unordered meaning you shouldn't reference a specific position in the set and expect to get the value you're looking for the order in which you add items to the set is not necessarily the order in which you'll get them back so one nice property of sets that we are taking advantage of is in this code it, sample is that they won't hold multiples of the same item if you add a string to a set when that string already exists it will not be duplicated in this way it can quickly get a list of only the unique uh, ip addresses on the revision history page disregard disregarding multiple edits by the same user so a couple of things to keep in mind when deciding between sets and lists in code that needs to scale Although lists are slightly faster to iterate over, sets are slightly faster for doing lookups, determining whether an object exists in the set or not. So this code also uses somewhat arbitrary yet effective for the purpose of this example search pattern to look for articles from which to retrieve revision histories. It starts by retrieving the histories of all Wikipedia articles linked to by the starting page, in this case the article on the Python programming language. Afterward, it selects a new starting page randomly and retrieves all revision history pages of articles linked to by that page. So it will continue until it hits a page with no links. So let's try to run it, see what it does. So it's getting all the IP addresses of the revision history pages. Okay, that seemed to work. So now that we have code that re retrieves the IP addresses as a string, we can combine this with the get country function. Uh, with a get fu country function which is here and this uh, function uh, is to resolve these IP addresses to countries so we have modified the get country slightly in order to account for invalid malformed IP addresses that will result in a 404 not found error so now we are combining the api free G geo ip uh, api to resolve the country codes so let's see what this does and like i mentioned you can download this code from the membership site area and it gets the code with the country code So this is this way we have now combined uh, web scraping with an API. So web scraping and web APIs might be uh, might seem like very different subjects at first glance. However, we hope 
I hope that this tutorial has shown that they are very complementary skills on the same continuum of data collection. So in some sense, using a web API can even be thought of as a subset of the subject of web scraping. After all, you are ultimately writing a script that collects data from a remote web server and parsing it into a usable format as you would do with any web scraper. So I hope you have enjoyed this video. And like I've said in this slide here, uh, thanks for watching. Please subscribe, hit the like button if you like the video, share the video, comment, and also visit the uh, source code uh, page for all the video tutorials and help to support me. Thank you guys for watching and see you in the next video. Bye guys.